Ellen DeQuinlan. I'm Ann Charles. I'm Keith Ghostland, and welcome to All Things LGBTQ. We are taping on Tuesday, October 1st. All Things LGBTQ is taped at Orca Media in Montpelier, Vermont, which we recognize as being unceded indigenous land. And talking about indigenous land, you're, you're going to take me across the country. I am. Ah, but I'm not going to like what you have to say, am yeah, I? Sure. OK. All right. We're going to start with a 17-year-old gay student at Reuben S. Ayala High School in Chino Hills, California, was injur injured after being assaulted by another student. The culmination of what the student and his mother say is a year-long battle against bullying, discrimination, and administrative inaction. He was physically attacked by another student. The student says his, that she has been going to the school, filing school, filing suits, and the school administration has done absolutely nothing. He's a young gay boy. Oh. Now, here's a story. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, a group of 22 Republican attorney generals led by Idaho Attorney General Raul Labrador sent a letter to the vice to the president and vice president of the American Academy of Pediatrics accusing the organization of violating consumer protection laws by endorsing the use of puberty blockers. The letter also demands answers to 14 probing questions and extensive access to internal documents. While the letter carries no legal authority, states have increasingly used vague and broad consumer protection laws to investigate the records of gender-affirming care and abortion providers, often with little or no judicial oversight. The letter bearing the seal of the Idaho Attorney General's office seeks to prohibit the Amer American Academy of Pediatrics from endorsing puberty blockers as a form of reversible gender affirming care for transgender teenagers using consumer protection, the authority of the Republican controlled states to challenge the AAP's endorsement of puberty blockers and justify extensive probes. So it's just harassment after harassment. I'm glad it has no legal standing. <coughs> the, I know. Well, actually, that surprises me because there have been similar suits, <coughs> like the one that came out of Texas about you know the morning after pill, et cetera, challenging the FDA's authority to regulate the industry. So I, this is this is in keeping with that same avenue of suit. They're probably hoping it'll go to the courts and eventually. Yeah. Get the verdict they want. To, to the Supreme Court, yeah. Michigan man says he faced racist and anti-LGBTQ discrimination and was later fired after he put in unsanitary conditions in two Detroit hospitals mm. where, he, where he contracted to work. According to the Detroit Metro Times, Jess Wright Law, a Michigan law firm specializing in workplace discrimination filed a lawsuit last week on behalf of Gerald Atkins against his former employee, North Carolina-based Compass Group and Croth Hall Healthcare. His suit, Atkins, who is black and gay, alleges retaliation, hostile work environment, war wrongful termination, and violation of Michigan's Elliot Larson civil rights law. Mm. Scary times. Yeah. Now, this is about um, um, the two men who killed Matthew Shepard. Oh. One of them is trying to get out of jail. Mm -hmm. But the Wyoming Border Patrol has denied um, a, com a commutation petition filed by Russell Henderson 
one of the two men convicted of the 1998 murder of University of Wyoming student Matthew Shepard. The parole board, right? Right. Whose brutal killing became a symbol of anti-gay violence and a rallying cry for hate crime legislation. Henderson has turned has served 25 years in prison. Can you believe it's been 25 wow. years? He was initially given two consecutive life sentences after pleading guilty to the charge of first-degree murder. But he recently sought a commutation of his sentence in the hope that, with credit for time served, the parole board will reduce his life sentence to a specific number of years in jail. So, what do you think of that? Well, good. I have one more story here, and it's Curry DeAngelis, a conservative education reform advocate who has espoused anti-LGBTQ plus sentiments, has been exposed for his past involvement in gay adult films. The revelation has triggered widespread accusations of hypocrisy online, given DeAngelis long-standing public stance against LGBTQ plus rights and inclusion. DeAngelis, a self-described school choice evangelist, is a senior fellow at the American Foundation for Children and frequent Fox News contributor. His career has primarily focused on promoting school choice and criticizing public education for allegedly indoctrinating children with woke ideologies, including support for LGBTQ plus rights. However, it has now emerged that as recently as 2004, DeAngelis performed in gay adult films under a pseudonym Seth Rose, including a scene in which he won a group masturbation contest. Oh, my God. So, how's that for hypocrisy for you? How's that for Linda giving the details? I know. Hi. <laughs> oh well, you know, it was relevant. <laughs> We're on the scene. Now that'll be in your head forever. Okay. Oh, well, not forever. Um, <laughs> all right, let me take us to Australia, uh, if I may. And this is kind of a world story, but Australia <coughs> is set to take the Taliban to the International Court of Justice for Gender Discrimination. And it's not the only country it joins, Canada, Germany, and the Netherlands. I think this is really groundbreaking. Um, it could see all four countries take the Taliban to the International Court of Justice over its oppression of women. And I have a picture before you now of our lesbian sister, Foreign Minister, lesbian, uh, Foreign Minister Penny Wong, who is spearheading this effort. The decision has been praised by human rights advocates from Afghanistan who say there's a desperate need for international communities to ramp up pressure on the Taliban. Just days after the regime introduced a new law banning women from showing their faces or speaking in public. Three of the countries involved um, have women <coughs> foreign ministers, Australia, Germany, and Canada. In a statement, Foreign Minister Penny Wong said the four countries would not stand by and allow the situation in Afghanistan to become the new normal. Uh, the Taliban has demonstrated contempt for the human rights and fundamental freedoms of women and girl, <clears throat> girls in Afghanistan through a campaign of a sustained and systematic oppression, she said. <clears throat> Afghanistan researcher at Human Rights Watch um, said the announcement may mark the beginning of a path to justice at the World Court for the Taliban's egregious human rights violations against Afghan women and girls. It's virtually, it is vitally important for other countries to register their support for this action, for them to involve Afghan women as the process moves forward, she said. Um, all four countries will argue that the Taliban has violated the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women and has systematically abused the rights of girls and women, seizing power as of August 2021. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, it ratified the convention in 2003. Afghanistan did well before the Taliban's most recent takeover. And it's not clear whether the current government will be willing to engage in talks with all four countries over the legal action. Uh, they have now, the four countries have now issued a diplomatic note to the Taliban, which is meant to kickstart negotiations. Uh, Taliban would likely have six months to give a response. If arbitration isn't successful, then they can bring Afghanistan to the International Court of Justice in The Hague to try to resolve the issue. Um, will they go? Well, yeah. Um, the f gender apartheid needs to be included in the definition of crimes against humanity, said the uh, executive director of an organization that helps Afghan women's rights organization. That way, it can also be prosecuted at the ICC, along with other gendered crimes perpetrated by the Taliban. But she also said the federal government could, to do, could do much more to ensure women fleeing persecution from Afghanistan have a pathway to Australia. And this pathway to get out of the country is one of the subjects of one of my primary stories today concerning Georgia. But. Let's move on now to Asia. And we have good news, a monumental step. The Thai king signs the sex marriage into same-sex marriage into law, a first in Southeast Asia. I saw that. Finally, uh, on Tuesday, it became the first country in Southeast Asia to legalize same-sex unions after the king signed a historic marriage equality law. Thai activists have been pushing for same-sex marriage rights for more than a decade. We know this. I reported on it. With their advocacy often stalled by political upheaval. Currently, the only two other countries in Asia to recognize same-sex marriage, as we know, are Taiwan and Nepal. The king gave assent to the law, which will take effect in 120 days. Uh, it's expected to take place in January. The first weddings are going to be there. Um, the law on marriage now uses gender-neutral terms in place of men and women, husbands and wives, and also grants adoption and inheritance rights to same-sex couples. You'll have lots of pictures when that happens. Well, yes, and I have a picture now before you, since you mentioned pictures, of Apawat Apaswat Seri, a well-known figure in Thailand's LGBTQ community, and his partner, Sapan Yu Panakot, Cool, who are among those who have been waiting for the law to pass so they can finally marry. We've been waiting for a long time, said Apawat 49, having been together for 17 years. As soon as it becomes law, we will go to register our marriage. Uh, and one more thing I want to tell you about is that an activist has arranged when the law comes into effect, uh, she plans to organize a mass wedding for more than a thousand LGBTQ couples in Bangkok on January 22nd. So, Yay. Yeah. Okay, there's the photo opportunity. That's yeah. right. That's right. Um, more than 30 countries around the world have legalized marriage for all since the Netherlands became the first to celebrate same sex unions in 2001. Now, Taiwan has taken a step forward, uh, sort of. It recognizes that same-sex marriages between Chinese it recognizes same-sex marriages between Chi Chinese and Taiwanese. They're now legally able to register their marriages in Taiwan. It has long Taiwan has long been at the forefront of Asia's burgeoning LGBTQ rights movement, which we know. In 2019, it was the first place in the region to uh, legalize marriage equality. But tensions between Taiwan and China, which claims the self-ruled island as part of its territory and maintains daily military movements around it, have meant cross-strait same-sex couples were not covered. But now, um, heterosexual, heterosexual couples consisting of a Chi of Chinese and Taiwanese spouses face more complicated processes than other international couples needing first to marry abroad and then pass an interview in Taiwan before registering their marriage. So now, uh, same-sex 
Chinese and Taiwanese couples can go through the same thing. They would first have to be legally wedded in one of the 35 countries that recognize marriage equality. So you got to leave your country and go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And then after submitting their marriage certificate and other documents, relevant agencies will conduct interviews. Only after passing the interview on the border at the airport and ports can they enter the country to register their marriages. This is our current principle for cross-strait marriages, uh, uh, an official said. There are currently around 360,000 Chinese spouses of Taiwanese citizens on the island. They have to wait six years to apply for citizenship in Taiwan, in Taiwan twice as long as those from other countries. So it's really, you know, a kind of a Pyrrhic victory. Um, separated from China by a narrow 180 kilometer waterway, Taiwan has its own government, military, and currency. Beijing has said it will never renounce the use of force to bring the democratic island under its control. Um, let's look, go to North America, our neighbors to the north. Two Canadian postal workers have been suspended for refusing to deliver, to deliver anti-trans flyers. Let's take a look at, at a picture before you now of St. John area mail carriers Tiffany Henderson mm -hmm. and Shannon Etchison. Uh, they're pictured here with Tanya James of LGBTQ plus advocacy group Chroma NB. A rally was held last weekend in support of the local Canada post workers who were suspended over their refusal to deliver a child sex change ban postcard. Um, they're in New Brunswick. They've been suspended, and the flyers came from Campaign Life Coalition calling on a ban, calling for a ban on gender affirming care for minors. The flyers describe gender affirming medical procedures as chemical and surgical mutilation and declared that God doesn't make mistakes. They were distributed ahead of the province's October 21 election. And this informed me about Canada and its elections. Um, the um, premier of New Brunswick is a real right winger and has passed uh, these. I guess we're not moving there. Well, not New Brunswick, but no. Justin Trudeau has protested all of these bills and all of this action. But anyway, let's go back to Shannon. He's fallen out of favor, though. Well, let's go back to Shannon Aitchison. Okay. A central a Canada Post carrier and union representative, she was suspended for five days without pay. She, who has a transgender child, said she couldn't deliver the materials. The third flyer was straight up nonsense. She told uh, the Brantford expositor, God doesn't make mistakes. So you're telling me my child is a mistake? According to the news outlet, five postal workers in St. John refused to deliver the flyers. Two were suspended, and others used personal days to avoid delivering the controversial material. Canada Post defended its decision, stating that the flyers did not meet the legal definition of non-mailable matter, and thus had to be delivered. Our important and long-standing role to deliver the country's mail should not be seen as tolerance or support for the contents of any mailing, a Canada Post spokesperson said. We are a neutral third party, regardless of our views. CDC, CBC reported on August 26th that Campaign Life, Campaign Life Coalition has been distributing similar flyers across New Brunswick supporting Premier Blaine Higgs's parental rights policies. Similarly to far-right measures in some areas of the United States, these policies require teachers to get parental dissent, consent before using a student's chosen name or pronouns as if, uh, if the student is under 16. Okay, we should move on now. All right. But hold on to that transgender thought because when I get to the news, we get a lot going on. Oh, yeah. I did. So October is LGBTQ plus history month. <clears throat> Go out and research what it is you do and do not know. Out in the mountains, October 1990 front page article recounts a political first in Vermont election history. What was it? And they were right there. Uh 
<laughs> hmm. So lo looking at events, Rainbow Umbrella, the women's discussion group. Right. Book discussion book group. Book discussion. What are we reading? Love is the Next Country by Rhonda Girard. There you go. All right. Rainbow Bridge, and we're going to have Zach put up the listing of all of their groups again. Please go on their website. They keep offering more groups, more opportunities all the time. And they're reaching out and doing things in collaboration with other community organizations, such as what we reported on the last show with the Health and Wellness Clinic, mm -hmm. with the Transgender Gender Identity <coughs> um, Healthcare Initiative. So also with Mosaic, which is in Barrie, look for their website, sign up for their newsletter. They are focusing more at providing services to LGBTQ plus survivors of sexual violence. And it's a variety of options that one can be involved. And they've been doing work with um, the Ishtar Collective to try and provide meaningful services. Fox Market, we just like mentioning them because they do monthly karaoke. Queer poetry reading and then special events. We we should go over for the, their specialty <coughs> dinners. Yes, I, I'm ready. Pride Center of Vermont on October 11th at 7 p.m. Savoy Theater, the Pride Center <coughs> in collaboration with the Vermont <coughs> Professionals of Color Network <coughs> is showing. <coughs> okay. I'm sorry. I don't know where this came from. Sorry. We just want to make sure you're okay. <laughs> I think I'll live. If we were live, we'd have EMTs <laughs> rushing in at this point. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. They're doing a special event screening one night only of Saving Face. Now, this is the one that their narrative is a Chinese-American lesbian <laughs> and her tra traditionalist mother are reluctant to go public with secret lives that clash against cultural expectations. But you thought you'd seen the film, but the same, oh, it was a different film? Totally different, yes. OK. I just wanted to be sure. And speaking of the Pride Center, people may have seen the article <coughs> in Seven Days about <coughs> issues between members of the board who identified as Jewish and encountering what they perceive to be an anti-Semitic environment at the Pride Center and some real clashes <clears throat> between staff and board. October 16th at 6 p.m. is the Pride Center's board of directors meeting. And you can participate on oh. Zoom. Oh, wow. That's good to so know. So if you've got <coughs> an interest or what you have at 6 p.m. Oh, you said that. Sorry. No, it's quite all right. And, and again, you go on the, the Pride Center site, and Zoom is an option for participation. Oh, good. So babes, we haven't talked about them for a while. I saw they were doing a Halloween <coughs> thing or something. Hold that thought, girlfriend. First Friday of each month is karaoke night. Third Thursday of the night is trivia night. Fourth Sunday afternoon is their cribbage tournament. Oh. So, It'll, be, it'll compete with your bridge. And October 31st at the White Church, doors opening at 8 o'clock, tickets are $10 a piece and only sold at the door, is the bad drug show. Drag show. Drag Each, show. Dra drug, drug show. show. <laughs> babes, babes is branching out. Apparently, they're yeah. a dispensary. No, drag show. <laughs> Featuring Rider Faster. Huh. I'm a whore, <laughs> and lavender homicide. Oh my! How, how could we resist? How could this? you go wrong? So, <coughs> the last event, and it says, "Hi, friends. We are excited to invite you to a special event hosted by the Vermont Democratic Party's LGBTQI Caucus. Oh, and the Wyndham County Democratic Committee, and it's on Wednesday, October 9th." 5.15 to 7.30 p.m., and this is an in-person at the Wyndham County um, Democratic Committee office on Flat Street. They're going to do phone banking on behalf of Chris Pappas, 
in New Hampshire who is their first openly gay member to the U.S. House. And they're also going to be doing phone banking, canvas calling for other out candidates as <clears throat> well as, oh, maybe Kamala Harris. Oh. Yeah. So, and if you're interested in the Democratic Party's LGBTQI caucus, there might be an interview forthcoming talking about who they are, what they're all about, how they came into being, and how you can participate. Oh, I look forward to seeing that. So I'm going to hand it back to you. <coughs> all righty. Um, I haven't seen it. It's on Netflix, but Ellen DeGeneres, is, this is supposed to be her last comedy skit. It's gotten very mixed reviews. Some people really like it. Some people don't like it at all. I've never been a big fan of her comedy. Um, early on, it was just too sweet for me. And then um, it got mean. Yeah, you know. Yeah, the criticism is she doesn't really cop to all the things that happen on the show, like the abuse and everything. Yeah. But, you know, was she supposed to do that in a comedy show? I guess not. I you don't know. know. I don't know. I haven't seen but it. Tig Navarro did a whole comedy routine about surviving breast cancer. The Taro. No, I'm yeah. sorry. It's okay. Yeah. That's why we have you here. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, um, and she, you know, she's a really good comedian, I think. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> the other person, <clears throat> the other woman from <clears throat> Australia, did her, <clears throat> boy, we're doing good tonight. <coughs> um, did her oh, uh, yeah. a woman from Australia, not Hannah Gadsby. Yes, yeah, she yes. did her, all hers on um, abuse, abuse and um, uh, bipolar. Is she a bipolar? no or neurodiversity? Neuro I think. Yeah. So that you know, it could <coughs> be done. Yep. But anyway, so now we're going to move on to after being a victim herself, Lamia Mocha Dame is one facing charges. The 27-year-old went viral earlier this week after footage from her arrest at a pro-Palestinian protest Saturday <clears throat> began circling online. What police cl have claimed was a standard detainment meant to prevent escalation was instead a violation to a completely new extent. The advocate said Mo Mocha Dame, who is the co-founder of a harm reduction nonprofit that works to prevent overdoses, was leaving the rally in downtown Orlando held by Central Florida Queers for Palestine when her small group was accosted by a woman leaving a nearby grocery store. While they did not know the woman, she says, they recognized her as she had berated them earlier during the protest. The group traveling in their cars together as the best <coughs> practice for safety attempted to ignore the woman until some police officer who had been hanging around the demonstration arrived. While the officers did not obstruct the group, they did not intervene to prevent <coughs> the women from screaming at the group. In fact, Mokadam says the officers instead walked with the women <clears throat> as if ex escorting her as she followed and harassed them. Wow. She decided to record the scene <clears throat> in front of her, which she was within her legal rights to do. This was when the situation escalated, she says, though not due to her actions. There was no announcement of you're under arrest, so what people around me saw is a grown man just shoved someone into the ground. The officers then started grabbing anybody they could get to. <coughs> Mogadam says that she was among eight people who were arrested and held in the black back of the police van for a wild amount of time until their clothes were literally soaked wet with sweat. They wouldn't listen to us when we said, we can't breathe, we said, we're about to pass out. They just slammed the door on our face, she says. They were kept in a county jail and stripped naked for a search. Oh, God. So. That's horrible. Another nice Florida event. Yeah. 
<coughs> Michael knows, Knowles, a far-right wing media commentator and host of the Daily Wire, is being criticized after he made inflammatory comments de literatizing LGBTQ plus families. On Wednesday's episode of the Michael Knowles Show, he argued that same-sex couples are unfit to raise children, calling their families pretend families and claiming they undermine traditional family values. Knowles, com Knowles comments has sparked outrage across social media and among LGBTQ plus advocates who have denounced his remarks as harmful and rooted in ignorance. Well, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, huh? Okay. Um, police in San Francisco have not yet determined whether an unprovoked assault by a man hurling racist slurs against a queer Thai man is a hate-motivated crime. According to multiple media outlets, Pat Carafat said he was outside his apartment in the city's Tenderloin area <coughs> around 3 a.m. on the morning of September 17th when he was approached by a tall, well-built black man who, without warning, punched him repeatedly in the face, saying he hated Asians and was calling him a monkey. Oh, God. And there's questions about if it's a hate yeah, crime? Yeah, no kidding. Okay. I mean, hold that. Hold that thought. Yeah. I know. Well, let me just say though, there. What happened? What was the story with that? Uh, those Palestinian students, one of whom was shot in Burlington, they were reluctant to charge that as a hate crime too. Because there were no there were no statements made about ethnicity or sexuality. culture. Nothing. I mean, it was just the act. And when they went through and looked at the alleged perpetrator's social media account. There was absolutely nothing there that showed animosity or a bias against anyone of, you know, a different culture. They found no evidence that would support it. You've got to prove intent. And that's what, that's what makes hate crimes so difficult to prosecute. I have to get inside your head. And you know, and if there's no nothing to back it up, I mean, yeah. what do you, you know? What can you do? But um, in this case, he, this cle case, he clearly made statements. <coughs> yeah, which he hadn't in the case in Burlington. Yeah, not about his, not about homophobia, but about being Asian. Also a hate crime. Right. Exactly. Ken Paxton, the notoriously homophobic and transphobic Attorney General of Texas, <laughs> is suing the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Uh, HHS Secretary Xavier, or Xavier Becerra and other members of the Biden-Harris administration over the rule requiring that LGBT plus youth in federally funded foster care programs must be placed in affirming homes. They don't want them in affirming homes. No. Mm -hmm. That was part of the suit that happened here in Vermont where our Department of Children and Family withdrew foster parents because they would not be supportive of <coughs> sexual orientation or gender identity. Yeah. And I have a few more stories, but I'll just do this one right now. And um, Mary Kay Costello, a military veteran and former assistant U.S. attorney, was confirmed as a federal judge on Tuesday. She is the 12th out judicial nominee of President Joe Biden, confirmed by the U.S. Senate. The most of any president in history. By a 52 to 41 vote, Costello was confirmed by the full Senate as a district court judge in Eastern District of Pennsylvania. With her kind of confirmation, Biden surpassed former Barack Obama's total of 11 confirmed out judges. According to the research conducted by the Progressive Leadership Conference on Civil and Human Rights, uh, former President Clinton had two out judicial nominees confirmed in the bench, while President Trump had two. Hmm. So, there you go. Ann, what do you have to say? I have, <clears throat> I hope to have my voice. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's go to Egypt. 
and I want to show you a clip of a very intense film. It's described as drama horror oh. at Linda Love, and it's, oh. the clip is intense, but there's, according to this, I hate to be a spoiler, but it ends okay, despite what you'll see now. But let me tell you, <laughs> an Egyptian gay couple returned from the U.S. to Egypt for a family emergency. The couple pretends to be friends in order to stay safe in this very homophobic environment. But coming back to Egypt already leaves Mo in anxiety and unease. Someone knows Mo's secret, and they leave him witchcraft at his door as a sort of threat and shame. Mm. Mo, who pretends to be a modern American atheist and free from the superstitions of his religion and culture, falls into terror after stepping into the witchcraft. His childhood terrors and deep religious fears will return to expose his shame to his boyfriend, who didn't understand that Mo still views their relationship as sinful. <clears throat> the horrific experience, this horrific experience will give Mo the confrontation he always feared, but he will fight back and will eventually be liberated. So let's take a look at the judgment. How come you are Egyptian and you don't speak Arabic? I never lived here. Just one week, but we'll be careful. This isn't LA. I haven't spoken to my mom in nine years. Oh no, why not? Just, uh, just problems. I'm happy you will meet your mother now. You only have each other. They put a speaker right at our window. Wait, wait, wait! Take your shoes off. It's just witchcraft. Even if it is witchcraft, you don't really believe in it, do you? So, you're okay with your child growing up? Telling you, hey, Dad, I like men to fuck me in the ass. I need to stay away from sins till this is over. And by sins, you mean we flatter. Do you believe in God? No. Mama, it's me. I'm I miss you. I need you. I can't even look at your face, you said. This makes me want to throw up. The most merciful and the gracious is being very kind to you. He says you will never make a full decision towards sin, unlike your other friend. Mama? Mom. You gonna let me in? I want to see that. Where's it playing, you say? Eventive Online, Plex, Apple TV Plus. Uh, none of which I have. Well, we can get Apple TV Plus. Yeah. Now, this is related to Egypt. <clears throat> Let's go to Europe. A British girl, 15, is forced to strip in front of Egyptian security guards because they didn't believe she was a fema uh -huh. female due to her short hair. Now, let's look at a picture of Caitlin Disley. <coughs> Uh, she recounted a distressing ordeal where she was compelled to undress in front of uh, airport officials in Egypt for a traumatic sex verification check after they doubted her gender. She had just arrived in the airport, in the Egyptian airport, when she was subjected to the humiliating procedure by security personnel. She was instructed to expose herself to confirm she did not possess male genitalia,
with her and her partner's family claiming they were barred from leaving the terminal again until the invasive examination was completed by a nurse. After the checks confirmed her gender matched the one of her passport, they were allowed to depart. But Caitlin has been left with deep-seated unease from the yeah. incident. She expressed feeling shocked and embarrassed about the events that unfolded. Caitlin noted that the only difference from her passport photo was her shorter hairstyle. Caitlin remarked, it was traumatizing and embarrassing. I have never been through, put through anything like that before. Her father, Tom Delcy, was keen to share his daughter's story to alert others to the potential for such distressing experiences in Egypt. Tom described the ordeal as horrible and said it had profoundly affected her since her return to the UK. He recounted the distressing ordeal, saying it's been a horrible experience for Caitlin, and I think it has hit her more now that she's back home. She was able to put it to the back of her mind while they were away, but there was the worry of it happening all again when they tried to at the airport on the way home. Jeez. She's a tomboy, but her passport says that she is a girl, and the picture is clearly that of the holder, shorter hair or not. Tom, who lives in Greater Manchester, shared that she had been eagerly anticipating the holiday with her girlfriend Liv and Liv's family. They had planned a 10-day stay at a Red Sea resort, hoping to enjoy some sun before school resumed. However, their trip took an unsettling turn shortly after landing on August 25th. Tom said two officials singled out Caitlin and demanded she strip in front of a nurse. He explained she, Liv, and Liv's parents landed in Egypt, and after disembarking, two gentlemen from security kept checking her passport and looking at her, but eventually let them all go through. I mean, you could see this happening. But when her, their bags were the last to arrive, leaving them almost alone, the same men approached again, claiming they needed to check something. Amidst the confusion, Liv's mom requested someone who could speak English, which they couldn't supply. They didn't have anyone, but eventually got the message across that they needed to check she was female and she was taken into a room. At first, I think the men themselves wanted to look at her intimately. I remember that. Yeah, they did. But well, they didn't. But Liv's mom put her foot down and they found a female nurse. I have no idea if she had had anything to do with the airport. She asked Caitlin to lift her bra, and then the message was conveyed that they needed to look down there, Liv's mom said. Not a chance. And they compromised by uh, Caitlin put her, sh her shorts tight to show that she didn't have any male genitalia. Then they were allowed to go. Now, as you may surmise, uh -huh. in Egypt, same-sex sexual activity is deemed illegal between men with acts of indecency, scandalous acts, and debauchery criminalized. Um, the organization Human Dignity Trust further states that there have been consistent reports of discrimination and violence committed against LGBTQ people in Egypt. Moreover, this has included abuse, harassment, forced anal examination, and forced payment of bribes. Tom expressed his desire to raise awareness when traveling to Egypt in the future. Uh, the family have since taken their case to the MP, whose team has informed them that she planned to discuss it with the relevant governor, government minister. Tom stated, we need to get the message out there. Caitlin doesn't want this happening to anyone else. It could be a 10 or 11-year-old next. We are not looking to prosecute anyone. We're just, we're against anyone else, especially children, have, having to face humiliation like That's that. That's awful. <clears throat> so don't go to Egypt unless you really have your and words about you. Short. Pardon me? Our hair is short. <laughs> now I have two major stories I'm saving till the end because they're pretty bleak. Uh, in Georgia, and this framing I think is important too because of all this talk about the border and exiles and refugees. The Georgia LGBTQ plus uh, refugees are saying that Europe safe lists have put them at risk. So um, as you may know, and I'll go into it a little now if there's time, um, LGBTQ plus asylum seekers risk deportation as European countries say it's safe. Uh, LGBTQ people who fled Georgia because of their sexual orientation or gender identity expose them to death threats, abuse, or curbs under new laws are at risk under the 
European safe states lists, which could see them deported back to danger. And so European countries don't want immigrants, so they, they don't really check the safe lists carefully. And if you're on a safe list, you, can, you know, your asylum request is automatically denied, Why? apparently. Why? Because you're safe in your country. What do you mean? You know? Oh. Lawyers, so it's an automatic denial. They may not have their asylum claims properly considered as their home country is deemed safe by a dozen European countries, including oh. Britain and Germany. Uh, people are not safe to be living freely without being persecuted in Georgia, whether it's by the government, the community, or family members. Um, this uh, person who works for Rainbow Migration um, helps LGBTQ asylum seekers navigate Britain's asylum process, and she says that basing a decision on outdated and incomplete country information mean the odds are stacked against LGBTQ plus activists. She and other activists want Georgia, which is applying for European Union membership, and it better not get it, taken off safe lists to reflect Georgian anti-LGBTQ oh. legislation passed this year, as well as prevailing prejudices. Uh, safe state lists are meant to speed up asylum applications by designated some countries as places where there is no fear of state persecution, violence, or armed conflict. That means people from these countries uh, have little chance of having their applications accepted, and uh, they could be deported more swiftly if their claims are rejected. In some countries, exceptions are made uh, for groups who may be targeted, such as when the Netherlands added Morocco to its safe list with an exception of LGBTQ applicants. The issue of LGBTQ rights divides opinion in Georgia, where the country's Orthodox Church, which opposes um, same-sex relationships, enjoys wide public support. Uh, opinion polls show deep uh, disapproval of same-sex relationships, and the Pride March in the capital of Tbilisi is often attacked by protesters. The Georgian parliament, and this is what happened recently, approved a law this week containing sweeping curbs to LGBTQ plus rights, such as bans on LGBTQ plus propaganda and gender reassignment surgery. Uh, foreign agents law came into effect in June that requires organizations having more than 20% of their funding from abroad to register as agents of foreign influence. So this is just right outside of Russia's playbook. Yeah. Um, thousands protested the bill before it was passed. The country's oppos uh, opposition in Western countries called it authoritarian and Russian-inspired. Um, the law, LGBTQ people said the law will be used to silence them. Um, the European Union said, Georgia, if you do this, you're not going to get into the EU. I don't think Georgia cares. Um, lawyers and activists want countries that receive the largest number of Georgian asylum applications, such as Germany and Britain, to up update their safe country lists. Um, the approach that we see is more and more than anyone from a safe list country will be immediately considered inadmissible. Um, Georgia has been on Germany's safe list since December 2023 and on Britain since April of this year. Belgium removed it in 2023 over human rights concerns, but introduced a different accelerated procedure for Georgians in February 2024 to fast track returns of economic migrants. Uh, lawyers and activists say Georgian LGBTQ plus asylum seekers could face harassment, violence, and even honor killings if they're returned home. Uh, one Georgian asylum seeker agreed to speak on condition of anonymity and said they were particularly at risk if their asylum application was denied. denied. They grew up in Georgia. Uh, news leaked out that they were gay. They were beaten. Um, uh, activists say persuading governments to review safe lists would be complicated by increasingly hostile anti-immigration rhetoric across Europe and possibly the United States as well. Um, okay, this is all ramped up. Wrap up okay, this has all been ramped up because there are scheduled elections on October 26th, and the Dream Party in Georgia is really anti. You know, is very right wing, and they're 
ramping up all this. And it caused, it's called the Dream? Yeah, it's called the Dream Party, Georgian Dream Party. Can I show you just three pictures? Okay. One of us, Lucas Aboltia, 19, an activist who was granted asylum after the Pride March in Tbilisi was attacked in 2023. He said the new laws show the government's true colors. And let me show you a picture now of last year, hundreds of opponents of gay rights stormed an LGBTQ plus festival in Tbilisi. That's why this gentleman left, forcing the event to be canceled. This is a picture of anti-LGBTQ protesters. Who, this is not a picture of them, but they managed to break through the police cordon, make a bonfire in the area designated for the Pride Fest. This year's tens of thousands of people marched to promote traditional family values at an event attended by the ruling party, which was deeply conservative and influential. Um, so that is a picture of the aftermath of the Tbilisi Pride Festival in 2023. And finally, in an equally bleak note, this law has had immediate consequences because the day after it was enacted, Kasaria Abramidze, 37, a trans model was murdered after they passed the law. And the law is being directly Good job. Blamed. Thank you. Sorry. OK, so holding on to that thought about trans laws and the impact, Trevor Project mm -hmm. put out their survey that they had done of LGBTQ plus youth and those states that have passed anti-trans laws, and there are 26. Yeah. I had lost count of how many. They have seen as much as a 72% increase in the rate of attempted suicides yeah. within our youth, directly connected to passage of these anti-laws. Sure. And as a key component of the debate that had ended up passing these laws were the proponents of the anti-trans laws saying, oh, there is no data that suggests that this is harmful to youth. Surprise. So in keeping in that thought, the FBI released its 2023 statistics. And what did they have to say? That for violent crime, there was a 3% drop. Especially murder, right? However, there's one group that there is an increase mm. in violence. What could that be? It might be LGBTQ+. plus. Sure. So race, religion is still the top for bias and hate-motivated crimes. We're right there. And it's sexual orientation and gender identity in the third and fourth slot for the incidence of violence, and we're the categories that are increasing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the rhetoric doesn't mean anything. Right. It's, I, if you haven't seen Linda's interview with Jaina from Free Her, go back and look for it because there is a debate happening right now about the new women's prison or what it is that we should do. And why are we building a new institution when it's already been shown it's ineffective mm -hmm. and it doesn't do what it is they think they are providing? And Jaina is a perfect one, too. And she had a lot uh, of good information. About exactly. It. Go on her website, free her. Yeah. Free her. And Linda has reported in the past about Moms for Liberty and their federal suit. Mm -hmm. Well, Boston Spirit did an article on the Massachusetts schools that were targeted as part of the 2,000 schools that the Moms Against Liberty were bringing this suit, saying, no, 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 you can't enact. Their response is they're making their pro-sexual orientation and gender identity policies and procedures even stronger and more active. Oh, and they're getting ready. And instead of backing down, they're fighting back. Good job, Good. Massachusetts. So, and yeah. quickly, you should have gotten your mail-in ballot. 
the most frequent reason for a spoiled ballot is people forget to sign the envelope. The other is when you're looking at individual categories, please keep track of, like with Senate, you can vote for three. If you vote for four, you spoiled your ballot. Okay. Please be sure that, as Professor Charles would tell you, read the instructions. <laughs> so the answer to, and very quickly, Catholic Diocese in Vermont. Oh. They're filing Bank for bankruptcy Rups. because they don't have the funds to settle all of the abuse cases. You know, they shouldn't filed be allowed against to do them. that because they may not have the money, but the church has the money. Well, one of the things that when you sort of push a little deeper is the individual churches set up their own Right, Nonprofits, right. so they are exempted from the lawsuits. So, and they have suits going back to 1950. And you know, they had that big thing in um, where was it with the, the the Pope threw them all out for their bad behavior? It was South America somewhere. Right. So the answer to the trivia question, front page article, political first. I keep putting out as a piece of our history that Ron Squires was the first openly LGBTQ plus candidate elected to the Vermont legislature. He was elected to the House. In 1990, Howard Howdy Russell was the first out candidate that won a Democratic primary for the Vermont Senate. But in the final race, he came he in lost. seventh out of six possible slots. <laughs> but hello, howdy, your dear old friend. So Is Howdy still with us? Yes, he is. Uh, we've met him. But I have a quick programming note, if I may. Last time, Keith asked me a question about sea lions. And if I'd listened to it carefully, I could have answered it on the spot. <laughs> a pride is the whole community of sea lions. But the harem is the particularly... Uh, the particular female coterie Component. that follows a male sea lion and probably engages in relations with him. <laughs> but thank I, you. <laughs> I, we have to fight the species nature <laughs> of our programming. So with that, remember everybody out there, the election is coming. The debate is tonight, so resist. resist. <laughs>